Jeez, you know, say you wanted to run over here. Yeah, I was ready oh, to go. Right. Get a little hey, sweat is in. Is that your exercise for the week? Or? That's about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Walking from my office down the stairs to the practice field. <laughs> yeah, I got some, some Calvin Ridley for you, Coach Dave. What do you got? Yeah, Calvin, uh, how's he going? And uh, people are he's getting a lot of attention, I guess, because, uh, uh, you know, he's talking about getting doubled and Coach was talking about it. Uh, you know, what's the, you know, what, how's that going for you? Know, how people are trying to play him? Yeah, sure. I think each week you go out, uh, the defense, regardless of who you're playing, no different than this week, uh, they'll have a different defensive plan for a lot of our guys, Rid being one of them. Um, it's our job as coaches that the game moves on right, to evolve and make sure that we get our guys the best chance to be successful. Um, obviously, most defenses, if not all, are going to try to take away uh, some of your better players. But I think Calvin's done a tremendous job of, really since the day I've got here and met with him when we started meetings, is his ability to stay locked in, uh, regardless of what just happened, good or bad, uh, through four quarters. And being able to play with him now a few weeks and see it live and in person in games, you see it in the practice field, you always wonder how that's going to translate. Uh, and Calvin's done a tremendous job. Uh, one of those guys, as well as a number of other guys who've done this, but um, Calvin stays locked in, ready to go. And I think what's the beauty about even the past week or the weeks before that is you just never know, regardless of what point of the game, your number potentially is the one who's going to be open. And I think Calvin does a great job uh, of staying in the present and realizing that, hey, his opportunity can come in the first quarter or can come in the fourth quarter. Were you surprised the rookie got, got so much attention to? And how did he stay ready to be available for you all late when you all needed Yeah, him? and I think that's, a, that's one of the under, you know, writing stories of the game about Kyle Pitts, you know, one of our guys that we're obviously trying to get the ball to different players, and he's one of them. Um, his ability in the fourth quarter, just like I explained with Calvin, really to stay locked in, stay in the present, uh, and, and make uh, what I consider one of the biggest critical third downs so far in our season. Um, on the road, third and eight, had a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he won it. And the ball went to him with the trust of the quarterback. And we obviously know what happened at the end of the game. He sets up a, our chance to get in field goal range because he stayed present, stayed locked in, um, and took each play as its own. And for a guy who's just gotten the league and it's essentially his third game, to be able to do that, it's what we anticipated when we drafted him. It's great to see it as the, as the games play. Um, and it's what we expect from Kyle. Did you anticipate that they would, the team, defense would try to take away picks so soon? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, he's obviously a high pick. Um, a lot of teams, I'm sure, did their homework on him in terms of no one knew where he was going to be drafted. Um, the physical ability from the college tape to what he's putting on tape right now obviously is showing up. Um, but again, I think the one thing most important about all our guys is the mindset and the mentality of just being ready. And if, if they're trying to do something different or they haven't shown on film and we're going to sit here and make adjustments as coaches and players just to be ready to do that. And I think that's been the beauty of not just Kyle and Calvin, but really the whole offense as we move through uh, this early part of the season and grow together. What is Going to Ridley, what is it about his route running? Mm -hmm. Because you've been around a lot of receivers, yep. call it anything, that stands out that makes it different. Yeah, I mean, I go back to the, my few years when I got a start in this league and a fortunate start. I was a wide receiver coach. Um, and to see Calvin's ability to put his foot in the ground, stop, restart, and get in and out of cuts, I've always admired it from a different team I was on in the past, and you'd see him on film, to see it up close and personal. Um, it's definitely a, a trait that uh, bodes well for him, and I think it gives issues to people covering him. Um, but I will say this about Calvin, just like other guys, his, his practice habits, how he goes about practice, and it's not just him, it's really how this offense is, their mindset moving forward, they're showing it on the practice field. So we're not necessarily surprised when you see it on the game film. Um, but he takes care of his craft, and he cares about it. Talk about the underrated piece with Kyle Pitts, maybe even underrated from last week was Matt Ryan having kind of that rough first half, but really delivering on those last two drives. What does that say maybe about his ability to deliver <coughs> the mindset that it takes to do that? And also, especially because he had so many or has so many young players like Pitts around him and even kind of shifting from like having Russ to OZ. There. Sure. Yeah, and I think that's also part of it. You have a guy who's been in this league a long time, but that's, that's a great thing he can rely on in terms of experience. 
the reality is, like you just mentioned, right, there's going to be new pieces constantly floating around him. What you love about Matt is the calmness in which he plays the game, um, seen a lot of things, been through a lot of things. Uh, his ability to stay present, like I've said before with other guys, is great. It gives a calming to the rest of the offense. And, and again, Matt was able to go down in those fourth quarter where we had about 21, 22 plays in that fourth quarter, and, and they didn't blink. Uh, and Matt was one of those guys that didn't blink and had a chance to put us in position to go win a game. Going off of that, Arthur was talking on Monday about how an underrated quality of Matt is is his patience. You know, there was a lot of that soft zone coverage mm-hmm. and kind of understanding, like, you know, things are going to shake out eventually. Can sure. you kind of speak to what you see? You talk about the calmness that he has. But right. I would think, you know, if you look at the opponents we played so far, um, you know, Philadelphia, a new opponent comes in, and they're probably one of the teams that, plays a lot of shell coverage in terms of the league right now. Uh, Tampa, obviously, within the division, they mix up coverage as well. And then what you saw this past week with the New York Giants have a ton of respect for what they do. Um, what Matt has prided himself on, what we talk about in offense, is he's going to make the play that's available. And if that play is to be thrown at six yards for a completion, then he's going to make sure that ball placement gives that receiver a chance to catch and run after I think sometimes, you know, and I've been through this a number of times about the ball traveling in the air. That's important. I get all the aspects of it. But the reality is to get some of these plays that are six, eight-yard completions that turn into 16, 18, 20, 25-yard completions, no different than Cordell Patterson catching a screen and going for whatever yards. It's ball placement. It's accuracy. It's timing. And again, if you're not throwing it deep every time and you've got to throw those intermediates, Right, you can get explosive plays. You can get chunks out of defense about if you're throwing on time with great ball placement and accuracy. And that's the one thing that we constantly push Matt to do, and he prides himself in doing. Who's the best note taker you've ever had? Oh, note taker. <laughs> yeah, I know. Put, oh, this is the right turn. Hey, you are putting me on the spot. I'm going to leave somebody out. That's right. We'll come back to it next week. Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm not just saying this. I'm not. Matt's very good. Um, some of the backup quarterbacks I've been around have been extremely detailed. Uh, one that comes to mind is Chase Daniel. I would sometimes rip his book and see he's got pages and pages. I said, my goodness, man, I'm not speaking that much. Uh, but yeah, again, and I think it works for different people too. Some guys just write down the important things that they know headline-wise they have to remember, and they can kind of filter the rest of the information. Other guys are like literally writing every single word that you have. So, again, I'm not sure if that necessarily um, matters in terms of the production at times, but it's just how their brains are wired and what hits their brain and how, it, how they can focus their attention. In terms of the trait and of a skill, studying, mm-hmm. how important is that when you're evaluating a guy? I mean, is it something that you, that you would be aware of in a draft process even? Would yeah, you, absolutely. Would you want to know what kind of notes he takes? Does he take notes? How yeah, important so, is that to I always remember this. I was at the Combine as a player, and the very first question I got from an unnamed team was, do you love football? I think most guys would say, yeah, sure, I love football. And then they went into the point of, all right, so, all right, in college, you know, how much film did you watch? How many notes did you take? Did you fill up notebooks? Who saw it? Anybody check your notes? What did you? Well, you know, again, if you love it, right, I'm not saying that's for everybody. Each position is different. But at the end of the day, like, if you love it, it's not work, it's not a job, it's a passion. So you want to be as much entrenched as possible. But again, I go back to the note taking and all that and the the time is I really do believe it's different for how your brain works. Some guys just have the ability to to take a bunch of notes, read back through them, and that's how they that's how they process. Other guys literally take a highlighter, go over some of their notes, and that's what they want their focus to be. I've seen production and success both ways. How, how is Dave Ragone as a note taker? I will say this. When I started in the NFL, um, I didn't really know how to do it, right? You just, you're a 22-year-old kid. You get in there in a quarterback room, and you're talking about things that you never talked about in college defensively, their fronts, their structures. Like, I will say this. I had, I had two position coaches my first couple of years, and Chris Palmer and Greg Roman, and I will say I grew through them and realize what was important. And still maintain those relationships close today, and those guys helped me and both saw, not the player in me, they saw the coach in me, and they were trying to groom me that way uh, more than anything else. But I wish they would have saw the player in me a little more. Maybe I had a different career path, but. 
But Coach, I know the D-line for uh, the Redskins has maybe not had the productivity with QB hits or with sacks, but when you think about him asking about a local product, uh, Montez Sweat, but mm -hmm. maybe Caleb McGarry having to deal with him or, or Chris and Jake having to sure. you know, deal with um, Deron Payne, what was kind of the game plan for yeah. him with that D-line? Look, you look at that, you look at the defensive roster. I mean, it's a talented group. And people talk about the four first round picks, and I would argue that, yeah, absolutely. They're talented players who play extremely well together. Then you've got the, the guys who come in at times who rotate in the game at the D-line spot, and you're like, man, these guys play really well together. So this defense, again, like the first couple of weeks, I know I'm a broken record up here, but um, I have nothing but respect for this, the guys they put out there. And it's not just the front, it's the backers, the secondary. They play well together. They obviously, they believe in what they do. You can see it schematically through last year into this year. I think, again, I don't go into the number standpoint of it. I just put the tape on, and they have guys all over each level uh, that create issues for an offense. And obviously, it's our job as an offensive coach is to make sure uh, we protect ourselves as much as possible. But it's a great unit. Washington football team. <laughs> Thank you. Look, I, I worked there in my past, so I have to make sure I, exactly yeah. Washington yeah. football team. That's right. How do you feel like your, your offensive line has, has, has grown since, since, like, since the first week? You yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think you have a situation where you have Jalen Mayfield, right, who you know we bring in here. Uh, he's going to play now, right? He plays three games. He gets a chance to go in there against some pretty good fronts. Um, he's seen different looks, different body types, different ways they're going to rush him. Um, and again, he's growing in that way. But also, you know, you talk about Henny, you got Lindstrom, the guys, all Caleb and Jake, I and mean, those guys coming together, you see on the practice field. And again, I think each group develops at different rates. Um, these guys, with the one thing I can say about them is they, they truly have each other's back. And that's just not the starters, it's everybody. Um, they believe in each other, and they push each other in the practice field. And that's why you'll see me at times when the practice starts, I go down to the O-line. They've got great energy. They do a, the coaches do a great job of pushing those guys with great energy, and those guys love playing with each other. So, again, I just think you watch them ascend, and, again, like arrest all these different groups. But I love what they're doing in terms of the, the brotherhood and mentality they have. What do, you do, what do you do once Josh comes back? when it comes to Jalen? Because Josh had won the job, and Jalen's obviously playing well. Do you, how do you handle that? Yeah, game? I think, I know you, you love this answer, but it, the, the competition, the competes, the ability to go out there and push each other and make each other better. Um, it's a conversation where we have one guy coming off injury. He's got a certain amount of time in which he has to work his way back. Um, we have another guy who obviously is going out there and playing games. We have other guys in backup spots who are competing on scout team that you love to see how they're doing because that's a true evaluation. They're going against a different defensive front. The defensive guys that we have present issues for our offensive line, and we see how they combat it. Again, I think you can't build enough depth of the O-line. I've said this before. In a 17-game season, I'll be curious at the end of the year how many teams play with the same five. So we're constantly trying to build depth, competition, um, and I think that's what we got right now. Right. I guess what I'm getting at is you know, teams, once they put rookies in, it's kind of hard to, especially guys you're counting on for your future, it's hard to come out the lineup. I mean, do you go and do that yeah, Jay, if Jalen's playing well at this point? And again, that's, that hasn't been a conversation I've been privy to. At the end of the day, it's about those guys going out and competing. And I think if it's whoever's coming back from injury or if we bring somebody in for whatever reason, again, a competition makes guys, I think, play better. And again, it's not a, you want guys to go out every single day with great energy, great focus, great passion. Regardless of the circumstances, and I think that's what all those guys are doing up front. With Jalen, we were talking to him yesterday, and he, used, he said, you know, I was embarrassed in week one. And he was like, it's been my challenge to myself over the last, you know, three weeks to not be embarrassed again. I mean, when you think about the humble, like being humbled in week one to now seeing active steps in the right direction, how do you kind of think he's taken ownership of his own development? Yeah, that's the first time I've heard of, of what his thoughts were after week one. Obviously, as coaches, right, we give the, the evaluations back. That's his comments. Again, what we try to do as coaches with all those players is put them in the best position. I think anybody who's ever played the game is going to be a true evaluator of oneself, good or bad. Um, I always believe in this league, the guys who stay a very long time are the ones that are completely honest with, each, with themselves. The guys that lie to themselves, right, typically, regardless of talent, don't 
just happened to have the career that they probably should have. Um, again, if that's his evaluation. We obviously, we've told him our corrections, but you like guys to have self-accountability, however they look at it. And again, we, we say that to all our guys. Coach, how is Jamin Davis showing up over there on the defense for Washington football? Yeah, so you've got a situation, yeah. Again, I think you look at all three levels. And you've got guys who are, who are playing, they're playing fast. Um, you notice that on film. You notice how, how hard they're playing in general. Um, and not even just to, to pick out one guy. It's just you look at that unit and, and you walk away and you put the clicker down when you watch a film and you say it's a very talented unit that plays hard, plays fast, and we've got our work cut out for us. Does Davis jump out at all? The, the rookie? Yeah, I mean, all like that's what I'm saying to you. Like, that's a good question. I think just in my when you watch him, it seems like all three levels. There's different guys that are coming out playing fast. Um, they play well as a unit. I think that's the the best um, characteristic trait I can give these guys. All right, well, thanks everybody. Thanks guys. Thanks.